Grace and peace to you on this third Sunday of Lent. Good morning and welcome to worship with the Rumpel Memorial Presbyterian Church. I am grateful that we can make this Lenten journey with one another and with Jesus, our Lord, whom we follow to Jerusalem in this season. We are glad to have you worshiping with us at Rumpel this morning via Facebook or YouTube. And we hope that you will tell us that you are a part of this worshiping community this morning. You have a few ways that you can do that. You can enter a message in the chat on YouTube or Facebook and greet your fellow worshipers. We also encourage you to fill out our virtual fellowship pad. That's a Google form. The link to that form is there on your screen right now this morning. You can link to that Google form at any time in the service and let us know who you are and that you're a part of this worship service this morning. If the church does not have your email address currently or if you want to share with us any prayer concerns, you can list those on that Google form as well. I hope that you already know that you can find a copy of the bulletin on the church website. You might also want to know about that church website, rumpelchurch.org, where you can find out more information about what is happening in our life and ministry in this continued time of COVID and social distancing. The bulletin is found on the Sundays tab in the drop down to bulletins, and then you look for today's date. During this season of Lent, we are offering many opportunities for us to study, to serve, and to grow as we journey with Jesus, and we hope that you will read through some of those opportunities on the bulletin or read about them on the church website so that you can participate in a way that you feel called and led during this Lenten season. We're excited to share that this space, the sanctuary space, will be open this afternoon and every Sunday during Lent in the month of March from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. We ask that you wear a mask and we will have volunteers here to help ensure social distancing, but this space will be open for you to come to pray and to reflect and to just spend some time in this space that we know many of you miss. So I hope that if you are not able to come this afternoon, there'll be one afternoon during the month of March where you can come and spend some time in this space. I invite you now with me to draw in a deep breath or two, to place your feet securely on the floor there wherever you may be seated so that you can find a more relaxed posture, a more receptive posture as we enter into this time of worship together. And I invite you to use the gift of this morning's prelude to prepare your heart and mind for the worship of God. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us worship God.
Please join me in the call to worship as it is printed in your bulletin. We are pulled in many directions. Many duties and tasks seek to lay claim on our lives. This day, in this place, let service to God be our choice. This day, in this place, we open our hearts and spirits to God. Blessed be the God of creation who has called us to worship today. Praise be to God who sustains and nurtures our lives. Amen. Our first hymn is entitled, When We Are Living. The text for the first stanza is anonymous, but the remaining stanzas were written by Dr. Roberto Escamilla. I was fortunate enough to speak with Dr. Escamilla this afternoon to ask him the circumstances that led to his text. He shared that the text expressed a sentiment that we all come to at some point in our lives, that of disappointment. In his case, it was not receiving a professional appointment that he had hoped to achieve. He dealt with this by coming to the conclusion that regardless of what we do or where we are, we belong to God, and our chief concern should be to glorify God in the work that we have to do. I invite you to follow the text as I sing. <clears throat> when we are living, it is in Christ Jesus, and when we're dying, it is in the Lord, both in our living and in our dying. Thirsty for grace? Are you hungry? God is calling. Come to the waters. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Merciful and loving God, we give thanks that you have chosen to touch our lives with your love. We cannot hide our wonder that you chose to enter our world and our lives in person, in Jesus. Yet we confess that we sometimes have trouble in our decision-making 
when faced with choices about whether we will serve you with our whole hearts. We are often tempted to put other people and other things first in our lives. Forgive us when the choices we make reflect not your glory, but our own selfishness. Forgive us when the choices we make revolve around judging or condemning others without first listening to their stories. Forgive us when the choices we make contribute to our own prosperity and well-being while ignoring the needs of others. Forgive us when the choices we make diminish our awareness of you, O oh God, in the midst of those who suffer. Gracious and loving God, strengthen us with the renewing power of your spirit so that the choices we make clearly reveal our identity as devoted followers of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear and believe the good news. Out of love for the world, God chose to share our humanity in the person of Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In Jesus Christ, the one who journeys with us this Lent, we are loved and we have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, good morning, friends, wherever you are this morning. I would like to invite any children who may be watching this video to come closer to the screen for the time with children, or as I like to call it, the time for the child within us all. <laughs> as you can see, I am standing back here in the back of the sanctuary under the education banner. <laughs> That's right, and here at Rumpel, we have four cornerstones that we like to think about in the mission and ministry of our church. And they are education, mission, community, and worship. Today in worship, we are talking about service and kindness. I wonder if you know what that word or both of those words mean. What does it mean? What does service mean? Or what do you think kindness means? Well, there are all kinds of ways that we can show kindness to the people around us by loving our neighbors in all kinds of unexpected ways. One way that I like to show kindness is by writing notes and putting them into the mail and sending them out to you all or to congregation members or to friends and family because that is a way that we can spread just a little bit of joy. And one thing I also love is that a few different artists in this congregation have given me blank cards that I can then send out to my friends and family. Let me show you, because I'm pretty excited about these. Here's our first one. I'm gonna hold it kind of close here. This is a painting or reproduction of a painting by Wes Waugh, who's an artist in Boone and also a congregation member. And today, his wife and daughter, Gigi, are helping us lead in worship. This is a beautiful card of the mountains that I can then send on to friends and family to show some kindness. The second one is by photographer in our congregation. I'm gonna hold it close. Do you recognize it? That's right, it's the church building. <laughs> and this is a picture by one of our congregation members and his name is Jim Ruff. And Jim takes all these beautiful photos of the mountains and the Blue Ridge Parkway. And he also takes really beautiful photos of our church. And then we can turn them into cards and send them out to friends and family. Ooh, this is a good one. This card is by Joshua Lentz Grimes. Can you see his name down there? And it is based off of Psalm 139 and it says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. What a great reminder to receive in the mail. And this one is blank on the back too. And I can actually send it as a card or I can send it as a postcard. So that's kind of fun. Finally, this is by one of the artists in our congregation, and her name is Norma Sudreth. 
and she makes these beautiful cards and beautiful paintings. And do you see this edge around it of paper? She made that paper herself. Isn't that amazing? I can't send this one out because this is actually a card to me that Norma gave me. And it really made my day when she was showing some kindness to me. There are a lot of different artists in our congregation, including you all who are watching this video right now. You can easily make a card also with your beautiful artwork and send it to a friend or family to show some kindness and to light up their day. Will you pray with me? There are a few different ways that you can pray. Put your hands together like this, or you can interlock your fingers, or you can give yourself a big hug, or you can hold your arms out, inviting God's spirit into your life. And let's repeat after me. So say, dear God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who taught us to show kindness. Amen. Go in peace, friends. song of preparation is the third stanza from the hymn from the nets of our labor in the eyes of a stranger tearful joyous or frightened in the face of each neighbor Jesus summons us all we will rise up and follow Christ before and beside us, loving pattern to guide us as we answer the call. Hear now a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verses 7 to 11. This section is a traditional, is, traditional Israelite practice of giving to those who are in need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church gathered here. If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns of the land, the Lord your God is giving to you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards them. Rather, be open-handed and freely lend them whatever they need. 
Be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year of for canceling debts, is near, so that you do not show ill will toward the needy among your fellow Israelites and give them nothing. They may then appeal to the Lord against you, and you will be found guilty of sin. Give generously to them and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all of your work and in everything you put your hand to. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. Our second scripture lesson for this morning is from the New Testament. Although during much of COVID, when we have been worshiping online, we have usually only read one scripture lesson as a part of worship, I wanted to be sure that this morning we heard from both the Old and the New Testaments. As a reinforcement for the message that service is central throughout all of scripture. In the Old and New Testaments, we can find the words serve, service, and serving over 1,000 times. This is a key concept of what it means to be a child of God and follower of Jesus that runs all through Scripture. This morning, we continue our Lenten sermon series that is based on themes raised in Adam Hamilton's recent book, The Walk, Five Essential Practices. For the Christian life. Russ began the series for us two weeks ago when we looked at the first practice of worship and prayer. Last week we explored the second practice of study and Hamilton was careful to remind us in his book and we focused on this some last Sunday that studying is really about listening and paying attention. And listening and paying attention are important factors in this week's essential practice and that's the practice of of service or serving others. In order to serve others well, we must also be listening and paying attention to what is going on with them. Gigi read for us our text from the, New, from the Old Testament, from the book of Deuteronomy. Our New Testament lesson comes from the letter to the Ephesians, a letter written to the infant church in the community of Ephesus. I will be reading this morning from the Message Translation of Scripture. It's one that I read from from time to time, a contemporary translation of Scripture translated by the late Reverend Dr. Eugene Peterson, one of our Presbyterian colleagues. I believe it's an easy translation to understand while also faithful to the original Hebrew and Greek texts. So listen for the word of the Lord. Instead... Immense in mercy and with incredible love, he embraced us. God took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. God did all this on God's own, with no help from us. Then God picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now God has us where God wants us. With all the time in this world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ Jesus, saving is all God's idea and all God's work. All we do is trust God enough to let God do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we'd done the whole thing. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. God creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do work we had better be doing this is the word of the lord thanks be to god have you heard of jim mattress mac macking vale if not my guess is that you may have seen images of his Christian faith at work in the news recently. 
Did you see any pictures of people sleeping in recliners in a furniture store in Texas or sitting on a sofa watching television after the recent winter storms there? According to the Washington Post in an article that was, posed, that was included in newspapers throughout the country, the Houston furniture store owner, Jim Mattress Mac, Mac and Vale, is known and was, has been known for his showmanship. There's even a commercial, and you can Google this to find a really hilarious picture of him dressed up as a mattress in one of the commercial furniture stores. But Mattress Mac is becoming more famous for something else, turning his expansive furniture showrooms into life-saving shelters. He opened his gallery furniture stores first to people who fled Hurricane Katrina in 2005, and then those in Hurricane Harvey in 2017 and Tropical Storm Imelda in 2019. And he did it again a few weeks ago for those who were hit hard by a deadly winter storm that left more than 3 million Texans without power and running water after record-setting low temperatures. Anyone was welcome to use the beds and sofas in his showrooms, to sit and take in a TV show, a movie, or a basketball game on the big screen TVs, and to sit down and enjoy a hot meal. And the instructions for all of this came from the top, from Mackingvale himself to all of his employees. And he didn't ask only for his employees to be present in the stores while this was going on. He was there himself serving his neighbors who came in. He provided housing to over 350 different people a night during the worst of the power and water outages, and up to 800 people a day came through the doors of the furniture stores to find a warm place to rest, some hot food, and a kind and compassionate face. The stores were supplied by generators filled with 15,000 gallons of diesel fuel that Mackingvale paid for. There was only one running faucet in one of the stores because of frozen pipes, so he brought in portable toilets, and rigged a special flush system in the restrooms with extra water. McInvale personally greeted many of the folks who came to spend the night. One woman expressed feeling that she felt like she'd arrived at her grandparents' house. She felt loved, appreciated, understood, and supported. McInvale showed his guests compassion and kindness. And where does this motivation come from to serve others from this successful business owner? It comes from his faith in Jesus Christ and his commitment to follow him. He says he was moved to open his stores again a few weeks ago because when he was on his way to church on a Sunday morning a few weeks back, he saw the police in a park with a homeless person who had died from being out in the cold. In the article that I read about Mackingvale, he quoted scripture from the gospel according to Luke as his motivation, saying, to whom much is given, much is required. To me, this message of Jesus is one that is very similar to the message in our text for this morning from the letter to the Ephesians. As those blessed with grace, mercy, and salvation through Jesus Christ, we are called to respond with lives of service and thanksgiving to God for all that God has done for us. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, our lives are to emulate the life of Jesus, which was a life of service and selfless love. If, as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are listening and paying attention, as Hamilton encourages us to do in this study, if we are paying attention to Jesus' life, to his witness, to his teaching, we too know that to walk with Jesus means that we exist to serve God 
and our neighbors. As our scripture says this morning, we are to join with God in seeking and building up the reign of God on earth, a place where all are housed and fed and loved and safe and healthy. In his study, Adam Hamilton teaches that at the very large, and when I say very large, the congregation he serves has over 10,000 members. In the church that he serves, the Church of the Resurrection, they challenge each and every one of their church members to be involved in service as followers of Jesus Christ within the church family and beyond the walls of the church every single year. In many ways, it's just a start, but we all have to start somewhere. We all have been given different gifts to use for the building up of God's reign on earth, but we have all been issued the same call to serve God and neighbor. And so I offer that same challenge to each of us this morning to receive that challenge during this Lenten season, but not just during this Lenten season, but this year. How are we called to serve God and our neighbor, both within the ministries of Rumpel and beyond our church out into the community and in the world? And we can all serve, even if we feel physically limited or if we remain concerned about COVID and are not willing to do a number of things still right now. Service does not always look like what Jim McInfail did with his furniture stores in Texas or what the amazing volunteers did when I went to get my COVID shot at the new Watauga County Rec Center in Boone. It looks like that, but it also looks like making phone calls and writing cards sitting at your kitchen table or at the couch in your living room, or sending emails from your computer, or dropping off food in the shopping carts outside the church for the Blowing Rock Cares Food Pantry, or returning your empty medicine bottles so that they can be reused and save the Hunger and Health Coalition money. There are many ways that we can serve within and beyond our church. As disciples of Jesus Christ, those who are listening and paying attention, we know that we exist to serve, to serve others, just as Jesus did. This is a calling that we all share in common. This morning, as part of our worship liturgy, we have a little different twist. Not that different, but a little different from what we are accustomed to doing. Instead of an affirmation of faith and an invitation to discipleship, two separate elements that usually follow the sermon, we will respond in a few minutes to what I have called a discipleship commitment. We will be invited to join together in saying John Wesley's covenant prayer. That's not something that we Presbyterians are probably very familiar with unless we have previously been members of a Methodist congregation. But it is a powerful prayer and statement of Christian faith and commitment that I think it doesn't matter our denomination. It fits for us. And I kept running into this covenant prayer of Wesley's in preparing for this sermon this morning. And so I finally made a change to the worship liturgy early in the week and decided to include it as a part of this morning's service. According to the United Methodist Church's Discipleship Ministry website, John Wesley adapted this prayer from the Puritan tradition, so it shares our common roots, the Puritan tradition that was so important to his own parents. And it informed his theology and his preaching. He expected that people who called themselves Methodists were to pray this prayer at the beginning of each and every year as a way of remembering and renewing their baptismal covenant. The United Methodist website continues, the prayer describes the life of a participant with Christ in his mission. 
It is a practical description of what Jesus was talking about when he said, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. The covenant prayer describes missional life devoted to following Jesus and serving as Christ's representative in the world he loves and is working to redeem. It tells us that being a Christian is more a way of life than a system of beliefs. The covenant prayer describes the Jesus way of self-giving and self-emptying love. The covenant prayer just seemed such a fitting response for us in this worship service focused on Christian mission and service. And so I hope when we recite it together, it will feel like an opportunity for us to make a commitment again, to restate our faith again, and our willingness to follow Jesus. And then worship will conclude this morning with us singing together a much beloved but really relatively new hymn, Here I Am, Lord. And so I hope that you will join with Dave and Eric as they sing and play and join your voice to theirs as we together commit ourselves to a life of service in the name of Jesus Christ. Here I am, Lord. Send me. This is our invitation during this Lenten season. But it is also our invitation each and every day as we seek to live as faithful disciples of our servant Lord, Jesus Christ. May we again today commit to a life of service in Jesus' name as individuals and together as the body of Christ called into service in the world, in Jesus' name. May it be so in your life and in mine. Amen. Our response to the word during Lent, we use, lead us, O Lord, from death to life. During the season of Lent, I like to open our time, our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession with a prayer practice for your own devotional and spiritual life. So this is an easy prayer where you can inhale and say, God, you are great in love for us. Inhale, God, you are great in love for us. Exhale, rich in mercy. Inhale, God, you are great in love for us. 
exhale rich in mercy. We pray with me. We are pulled in many directions, God, many duties and tasks that lay claims in our lives. This day in this place, let service to God be our choice. This day in this place, let us open our hearts and spirits to you, O God. And blessed be to God, you who created, who called us to worship, and praise to you who sustains and nurtures our lives. Indeed, holy God, it is good to worship and serve you. Today we pray for your church in every place, that we may worship and serve you faithfully. For leaders and people in every land, for justice throughout the world, that there may be peace and plenty for all. For the earth that you have made, that it may flourish in beauty and show your glory. We pray today for all those who hunger and thirst, that they may be filled with good things. Today we pray for all of those who are ill, for those who are sick, for those who are lonely or hurting. We lift up today from our congregation, Bill Hall, Gus Newton, Bill Goodman. May those named and unnamed, those who are written on our hearts, know your loving care. God, you are great in love for us, rich in mercy. You have made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. You raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that the coming ages you might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. God, you are great in love for us rich in mercy. We now pray together the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's discipleship commitment is a unison prayer from John Wesley, and you can find those words printed in your bulletin. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. For, and now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it, and the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen.
Our final hymn is I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, or as we know it, Here I Am, Lord. <clears throat> I, the Lord of Sea and Sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I send? Here I am. May we go forth into the world in peace. May we be of good courage. May we hold fast to that which is good and return no one evil for evil. May we strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. And may we love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>